Welcome to another episode of the Canon Studios podcast. We're excited that you're here with us. We have a really special guest and someone that has a title that we've never had, I don't think, in this office before, in this studio before, so I'm excited for her to be here. Um, We have only met a few times, um, so I'm excited to actually get to know more about her today um, as we have a conversation. Um, Are you ready? I'm ready. Here we go. (laughs) Well, guys, listen, if you are in the Cherokee County or North Georgia, really just on social media and follow her, I have Dr. Lauren here today, Dr. Lauren Carver, um, and I'm excited to have a conversation with her. It's going to be good. Um, The reason why I wanted to have her on the show is she said something that was so profound during one of our business networking meetings that I haven't heard a lot of people hear. And one of the things she said was, don't be afraid of giving away too much value. And I was like, man... She needs to be on the podcast. <laughs> so we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Um, let's jump right in. Awesome. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, we always do some get to know you um, questions, right? So I guess just the the basics of maybe what someone wants to know is how long have you been in Cherokee County? Are you from here? Just, you know, some some questions like that to get to know you. Yeah, so I'm actually from South Dakota. Okay. I came to Georgia because it was uh, much warmer. I didn't want to start my car for like 45 <laughs> minutes before I got in it every day. Yeah. <laughs> so I came down here. I went to school at Emory for physical therapy okay. and then graduated and then stuck around. There so yeah, I've been um, officially in like the Cherokee County area for a couple of years. Okay. Um, but I opened my business about a year ago okay. and we're in Canton, okay. so the brick and mortar practices in Canton, but I love the area. The community is really supportive and yeah. there's a lot of really amazing um, business owners and just yeah. the the support system up here is really great. Absolutely. And for maybe I understand what it is that you do because I get the privilege of hearing you at our networking groups, but for maybe those that are listening, nobody is better to explain their business than the yeah. business owner. So yeah. would you mind taking a second and just let everyone know what it is that you do? Yeah. So I own a company called Barbell Public Rehab mm-hmm. and um, I am a pelvic floor physical therapist. And a lot of people don't know what their pelvic floor is or that they have a pelvic floor. Mm-hmm. Um, both men and women have pelvic floors. If you you can believe it or not. There you go. And um, the pelvic floor is actually part of our deep core system. Mm-hmm. So it's the bottom of the core canister. So um, a lot of times if there's any dysfunction in that deep core canister, we can have lower back pain, hernias, Mm. leakage, chronic constipation, pain with intercourse. Um, It can show up in a lot of different ways. And Mm -hmm. so we are the experts in that. And we restore that deep core system, restore the pelvic floor. And then I named my company after just my love for treating barbell athletes. So that's where barbell pelvic rehab came from. Okay. I love it. I love it. Yes. Um, so if you've had a child. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Pregnant, postpartum, you're having pain, you're having leakage. Mm-hmm. Like even if you had a C-section, they are really? cutting, yeah, they are cutting into your deep core. Your pelvic oh. floor still needs some help. So yeah, come and see us. We can help you. You don't okay. have to be your pants the rest of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Most women don't know that. Right. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, know that. Until you said that, I just thought it was a normal thing. You know, they're like, I mean, not to get too graphic. They're like, just do your Kegels. And I'm like, I am, but I'm still peeing when I do jump in chest. Exactly. <laughs> so Kegels, yeah. So the the pelvic floor is like a trampoline. Uh-huh. And so just doing a concentric or an, an activation like a Kegel is yeah. not going to restore the dynamic um, movement mm. of the pelvic floor. So we take a full body approach. So okay. yes, if you've done, if you've tried Kegels and it hasn't worked... <laughs> Come and see your girl. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> yes, you've restored hope in all of the moms that yes. understand or soon to be moms even. Yes. Um, okay, so perfect. Thank you for that. Now let's jump into my kind of favorite part. Um, it's like some, maybe some things that people didn't know about you, right? So if you could choose any job in the world, regardless of qualifications or salary, what would it be and why? Mm. I really like um, interior design and home mm. improvement. Okay. So if I had a lot of free time, yeah. our entire house would be like done probably like three times. <laughs> 
So I I love like the visual creation and like before and afters. And so that would be it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Visual design. So like. Okay. Got so do you watch a lot of HGTV? Yes. Yeah, so okay. Lots of HGTV. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a dream. Okay. I love it. Gotcha. Okay. Second question. I've never asked anybody this one. If you could create recreate a music video, which one would it be? Mm. I'm really curious about this. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah. So I had a phase where I like only listened to Macklemore. Okay. <laughs> okay. And so he has uh, the thrift shop music video yeah. is amazing. And so I'm like, I want to ride on all the crazy bikes and all the fur coats, like all the ridiculousness. That would be super, super fun. Yes. I'm like, there's a lot of good wheels around here. So we could. Yeah. <laughs> that would be a blast. <laughs> Okay, Macklemore. Shout out to Macklemore if you're listening to this. That's right. Um, Holla at me. <laughs> I'll do your next music video with you. <laughs> yes. All right. What's the most unusual food you've ever tried? Mm, this one really isn't that interesting. I grew up in South Dakota, and so there's really like you met me, mean potatoes and mean potatoes. <laughs> but we um, we were in Florida last year, and I did try some alligator. But that's okay. that's that that's about as crazy as I get say that what's your thoughts on alligator like trying it i mean it kind of had have you had alligator before a while ago and it was fried i'm from texas everything i mean is it was fried. fried too okay but it kind of reminded me like the texture reminded me of like a scallop or something like yeah. that and yeah. then it didn't have a ton of flavor to it so yeah a lot of people say it tastes like chicken. And I'm like, mm, maybe like the fatty part of chicken. I don't know. Maybe I had like the fatty part of alligator. I don't know. But I'm with you. It's a mix between, I don't know, chicken and fish. I don't know. Yeah. It's not I something I would that. just cook for dinner. Yeah, definitely not. Mm-mm. Anything fried. Yeah. I can, I can typically do. Yeah. So. <laughs> I guess even if it's fried alligator, I'll, I'll try it. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alligator. That is you know, an unusual food. Okay. Well, now that we've gotten to know you and understand your, um, Macklemore dreams of recreating thrift, thrift, thrift thrift shop. shop. I kept wanting to say store (laughs) thrift shop. Yeah. All I can imagine is him with the, with the fur on. Um, let's jump into the reason why, um, people are really here. Um, yeah, they want to get to know you, but they want to hear some of the meat of the conversation, right? So let's jump right into kind of the, the questions that I had, as you said, what you said, um, at our business club. So the first question is how can businesses, and ins- well, let me take a step back actually, uh, before we jump right in, because I do kind of want to expand a little bit on what you said about, um, how it's okay to provide value without feeling like you're giving away too much. Right. Mm -hmm. So in your business, I would consider your business a pretty unique business. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people didn't know that men and women had a pelvic floor. So for you, do you find yourself providing a lot of value? Maybe you're probably having to educate people a lot Mm -hmm. on what it is that you do. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so when you said, don't be afraid to give too much value, I guess, where did that kind of come from what were your thoughts behind that yeah I guess I have also struggled with Mm -hmm. this topic which is why I spoke out on it a little bit um I think the the thing that was brought up in the business club meeting was um I feel like I'm giving too much information away as someone said they think they're giving too much information away during like their discovery calls or whatever whatever they called it and I think it's important to know that even if the, you're giving away value to a client, that does not mean that they don't need you or don't mm. want to work with you still. And I think that is like the underlying main fear when someone's like, I can't give away too much information because it's going to make them, you know, decide that they don't need me anymore. Right. And that's really not the case. Right. It's just going to make them know that you can fix their problem or help them mm. with the issue that they were coming to you for. Yeah. And if you can't help them, then they're probably going to recommend you. Yeah. Next time that comes up in a conversation. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I really like that because like you said, I think the underlying factor of 
me feeling like I'm giving away too much is the fear that they won't use you. Right. right? Um, when sometimes it may reveal that, it, it may reveal to a person why they need to use you mm-hmm. um, or work with you, not yeah. use you, work with you. Right. So, um, yeah. yeah, I really, really like when you said that because it's almost the opposite of what, you know, a, a lot of people hear or a lot of people say. Mm-hmm. Um, so how can businesses ensure that they are providing their customers with enough value without overwhelming them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so that that is a big thing. I think the, the main the main point that you have to decide is which type of conversation are you having? Are you doing a call for them, like an Mm -hmm. initial consult call or discovery call or whatever you want to call it? Um, And then you just decide on that call, what are you going to give away like one valuable tip? Are you going to give away um, a handout for them if they Mm -hmm. still decide they're not going to book with you yet. Um, so you just have to be really clear and like what the parameters are because you can easily, easily overwhelm somebody. Like I could talk someone's ear off about their (laughs) issues. Like, Oh, that's connected. Oh, that's connected. Oh, I can help you with that. But it's truly can get super overwhelming for the customer on the other end. So you just got to, um, really make it as basic and simplified as possible and then decide, you know, someone's calling me for leakage or, um, something that's truly going to help them. I'm Mm -hmm. going to give them one tip. I'm like, Hey, what I want you to do is if you're peeing all the time, every 30 minutes, don't stop going just in case there's a tip for a lot of you. <laughs> don't go just in case. Um, right. cause it's going to make you pee more. Ooh. So I, I'm not afraid to give some really good information that's going to help somebody. I'm just really clear on how much I'm going to right. so that I'm not like dumping all my info on them. Right. Okay. Cause that may, over, like you know overwhelm them and they're like I don't even know where to get started and it's too much exactly and usually if you're overwhelmed it mm-hmm. creates paralysis so mm-hmm. if you're overwhelmed they're probably be like oh I can't I can't even deal with that right now so right. I'm just not going to right that yeah. makes sense well do you think there's a such thing as providing too much value that kind of feeds off of what you were just saying I think that if you're a business and um, it depends what type of services you provide, if you mm-hmm. provide a lot of one-on-one services, um, providing too much value may look like giving away too much of your actual time mm. for free, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. because um, it's hard to be a business when you're not profitable, you have to be profitable. So yeah. making sure the type of value that you're giving away is still like really helpful for the customer or mm-hmm. the potential customer without sacrificing too much of your bottom line to do it essentially. So right. that would be the only like you have to weigh it out. So I would give somebody say a handout or right. an ebook or something like that. I'm still providing them so much value. Yeah. Um, kind of confirming like, yeah, this is how I can help you. This is why you need to see me. Um, but also giving them some good information and not taking additional time from right. me. Right. Because a person that's inquiring about services, if they're taking too much of your time, then you're not able to fully help your clients that are already working with you too. Correct. Yeah, exactly. And energy yeah. too. Like it, <laughs> yeah. So that would be the one caveat that I would say, just make sure it's not, you know, yeah, I like that. Mm-hmm. And it's in a sense, it's probably helps, uh, helps to set expectations too, that the client knows like, Hey, I, I have 15 minutes with you. Yes. And really, if you need more information, I have these resources. And if you need anything outside of that, maybe you need to schedule a time to come and see me. And that helps you qualify the client, maybe. Exactly. So I like that. Um, So how do you think businesses can identify the needs of their community and then provide them with the value they are looking for? Yeah, I think that... You have to pull your target audience for mm-hmm. what they want. So mm-hmm. um, primarily, we market to pregnant and postpartum women. And so pulling our audience on like where the gaps are that they're missing or um, there was a post this weekend in Cherokee Connect where someone was asking questions on like what kind of workouts they can do when they're mm-hmm. pregnant. Well, we're the perfect person to help them with that. Okay. So knowing that, 
um, that's a, probably a pretty frequent question that the yeah. people in our demographic, like our target audience has, then, you know, maybe creating something around that mm. and then making sure you're also using their language. Right. So I, um, recently hired an administrative assistant who's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. And I asked her, I'm like, so if you were to Google, like, um, like leakage or incontinence, like what would you call it? Because I'm not going to call it what I would call it Mm -hmm. because most people would not call it stress (laughs) urinary incontinence. You know what I mean? Wait, what did you just say? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, exactly. So leakage with like jump roping is called stress urinary incontinence or leakage with coughing and seizing. But you would never type that in. No, I would type in, how do I stop? leaking or peeing when I sneeze. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. So making sure that, um, when, when you are finding out the needs of what the community wants. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of pregnant postpartum women that want to learn how to exercise or what they can do for exercise or for their core abs. That's what they would call it. Abs most likely, um, for, you know, not to pee. So you just have to kind of structure it based on like your actual audience. So if you can pull them or do research, that's the best way. That's good to know, um, that they would come to see you for that because my first thought, and like you said, that's really, that's really good. And really for you, like doing some listening to your audience to know, Hey, they're asking these types of questions because if someone said that I would have thought they needed to go see a personal trainer, but that's probably not because a personal trainer may not know how a pregnant woman needs to do maybe certain moves or it could actually harm. I mean, I don't know. I'm not yeah. a personal trainer or a yeah. doctor, but yeah. that's good to know. Yeah, I think that most people who don't have pain during um, pregnancy, they yeah. can do really well with a personal trainer. But it's not a bad idea to at least come and see us for one or two visits during pregnancy. Okay. And that way we can teach people how to properly use their deep core because a lot of people think they're doing it correctly and they're not. So mm. it can kind of save them from problems down the line and then yeah. they can implement that while they're working with their personal trainer. Okay. So, and then, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now that's good to know. Really good to know. Um, what are some common fears you think businesses have about providing too much value? So we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but that I think that the main fear is like not being able, like people not using their services or not being able to make their bottom line because now they're giving away too much information or too like, but honestly, (laughs) if you think about it, like Mm -hmm. I love, so I really like Tony Robbins or I like listening to him and I like listening to Ed Milet and what do they do? They have like hour-long YouTube videos and podcasts that they post every day, but I would still go to one of their seminars because right. I, I like, I know them. I like them. I trust them. I, they've already provided me so much value that I just like, I would buy their book if yeah. I had a book, you know right. what I mean? So the fear is that, you know, giving away all that information will make people not want you to, not to want to come see you or not want to use your services. But in reality, the people who I've spent the most time and have provided me the most value just kind of affirms that they're the person that is going to help me. And so when I'm ready, like I would love to go to a Tony Robbins like seminar, you know? (laughs) So yeah, that is a good point because, um, I don't know if, if it, it's almost like a mindset shift, right? Mm -hmm. Because we do think, Oh, if we tell them too much or we tell them like our secret sauce, now they're going to take it and run with it. I, uh, when I hear people say that, I'm like, you realize you are the sauce, right? Like not what you tell somebody. And right. so um, to your point, right, we listen to these these experts in their field like Tony Tony Robbins. And you never hear anyone say, man, he's given so much value. I'm not going to go. I mean, his conferences are sold out. Exactly. And so it's like, I don't know why there's such a, a diff. It's a mindset thing, it is. right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, that's a really good point. Like they're giving away all this value. Of course, I'm going to, if they're doing this for free, <laughs> what am I going to get at a conference? Exactly. <laughs> totally. Yeah. So that's, that's a really good, I like that. That's a really good point. Um, how can businesses measure the effectiveness of the value they are providing to their communities? 
Well, I think that really just comes to terms with, you know, word of mouth referrals and things like that. So there are different metrics that you can measure. Mm -hmm. Um, If you're getting more word of mouth referrals, if you're just getting more business in general, then generally that maybe not increasing your paid marketing, that's pretty much saying that the value that you're providing, maybe even for free at some times, like Mm -hmm. I do a lot of free workshops for, you know, 15, 20 people Mm -hmm. and not all of them book, but I know that when they're ready to, they'll book or someone will say, oh, one of my friends was at one of your workshops and she told me I should come and see you. So essentially, if you're providing the value then um, and you're not doing it in a way that compromises like your time too Mm -hmm. much, like I can speak with 15 people to 20 people in one hour at a workshop. And mm-hmm. that doesn't compromise a lot of my time, but I'm mm-hmm. still providing a lot of value. Right. And when they see that, then they'll want to tell their friends about it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. I like that. You can't always measure the effectiveness, um, like you said, with paid marketing, but um, like you can with paid marketing, but if someone tells you, or if you ask them, Hey, how did you hear about me? Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that. Okay. Can providing too much value actually benefit a business in the long run? And if so, how? Um, I, I do think it can, it just, you know, depends on that same time verse value quadrant we were talking about before. Yeah. So, um, making sure that you're giving, a lot of value to actually help people because Mm -hmm. truly the point of um, my business and most businesses is we're trying to fix a problem or we're trying to help somebody. So Mm -hmm. as long as you're helping somebody in some way or giving information that's going to help them, I think Mm -hmm. in the long run that is only going to um, make your business flourish more. Right. You're just helping people, even if there's nothing that's coming in return of it. Right. Eventually it will. Yeah, eventually. Like you said, they may not become a client immediately, Mm -hmm. but you may look up in a year and now they're always going to think of you, whether that's for them personally or a referral Mm -hmm. or whatever. So awesome. It's not always the right time for everybody. Right. You usually have to go through, you know, multiple like, you know, stages of readiness. Yeah. Not everybody's ready to change the second that you, they learn about you. Right. But as time goes on and they notice, oh, okay, well, my quality of life is going down. I can't pick my baby up. I don't want to, I can't run anymore. And that's affecting my health and my mental health and all these things. And I'll be like, okay, now I'm ready like to fix my leakage or to fix my hip pain. And I'm ready to see you now. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. They're thinking about they're You're staying top of mind basically. Mm -hmm. So got it. Well, we've run through these questions um, and they've been, it's been really insightful just to hear like you talking about it because we're in two completely different fields, right? Mm -hmm. Um, You're a doctor, I'm not. (laughs) (laughs) So hearing this from your perspective um, is really like enlightening um, because even though we're in two completely different fields, the information is still transferable. Oh, absolutely. And so what you're telling me, I'm like, oh. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think about that because just like you could have someone easily try to take all of your time, we run into that same, yes. exactly. <laughs> that same thing. So, um, well, what questions do you have for, I know Kyle's not here. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, I do. So what are your favorite ways to provide value? I mean, you're doing a podcast, yeah. so this is providing yeah. value to people who listen to mm-hmm. you. So this is one way. Do you have any other favorite ways? Honestly, I like to meet one-on-one with people and try to, when I have, I, I probably have a problem with providing too much value because I tell people I want to equip them so that even if they choose not to work with us, they can still go out and create their own content. Um, and so most of the time that happens through like one-on-one conversations, I sit down and if they ask me questions, I'll tell them. Um, now some people will try to, you still have to put like guardrails around that because, um, people will try to take advantage a little bit, especially in our industry. But I think that's, that's kind of another way is 
it's just scheduling a one-on-one. Um, anytime I talk to somebody, whatever they have a question about, um, if I know, I'll tell them. So, um, so yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, trying to think if there was another one. So you guys have a little, you have a studio here. Mm-hmm. So what are, what are some other things that you do? You have a podcast room. Yeah. And I, I like, I need to learn more about your business. Yeah. And like, and so, <laughs> so curious. Yeah. And that may be for another time, but yeah. So really what our, what we want to do here and kind of what I guess our purpose is here at Canyon Studios is to help um, business owners connect with the community through content. Yeah. So um, we realize that business owners, um, some of them just aren't aren't comfortable being on camera. Mm-hmm. So we provide podcasting. Right. Mm-hmm. You may be okay starting out just using your voice and no video. That's fine. Um, so we do podcasting, um, video production, and then photography. Um, a lot of business owners, right. They may need to update their headshot. Sometimes that's the starting point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, is they've never had a professional headshot, um, or a branding session, right? Like let's incorporate your brand into what it is that you do. The picture that you sent me is incredible. I love it. (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, this looks so fun. Like, you know, you put personality into it. It's most of the time you see doctors pictures and it's like them with their jacket i'm like i i really like like i really like this so y'all will see it when i post the graphic but (laughs) so yeah that's essentially what we do what we do here try to help businesses connect with the communities that they're in through content so yeah yeah and it's it's so key because people who want to connect with the community and they want to do themselves. It's not the same as working with you. Mm -hmm. So um, even if you give them, you know, some information, some tips Mm -hmm. and maybe like an easy way would just be an ebook for y'all. Right. So you're not spending as much one-on-one time with people. Um, yeah, yeah, but I mean, one-on-one time with people is great, but yeah, it can also drain your energy. Right. So, you know, there are benefits of that, but you know, people working with you is going to accelerate them so much quicker. Yeah. And so as long as you are conveying that, I think that yeah, yeah everyone that needs to come and see, I need to come in here and see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some help. Okay. Now I'm going to do an ebook. Um, thank you for that. I will shout you out in our ebook because you in- just inspired me to do yeah, that. You yeah. Absolutely do one. An ebook for sure. No, you're, you're, I think you're right too, right? Kind of even going back to the questions of feeling like you're providing too much value. So for me, um, so my husband has um, a tech background, right? Mm -hmm. So um, he's all about, hey, I have this idea. How can we build it, right? You don't get that. Like if you just record content or you're trying to, if we understand your goals and what you're trying to build, that really helps. And then for Mm -hmm. me, I have a marketing background. So um, strategist background. So even if I tell you, hey, you can go and record your content and this is what you can say, if you don't have the strategy, it doesn't matter. It's very, it's very true. <laughs> it's, you know, so yeah. um, yeah. I think for me, kind of going back to your point, when I have conversations with people, I'm constantly thinking through that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have to hold back a little bit because I will, I want every small business to be incredibly successful, but sometimes I give them so much information they don't start. Um, yeah, that's where the overwhelm kind of mm-hmm. takes over. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, well, I am on, well, on my website, but also when we're on phone calls with mm-hmm. our potential clients, we have like a three-step method. Mm-hmm. So we, we tell them how we're going to fix their problem without all the nitty gritty mm-hmm. in the middle of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's our, our methods like release, reload, return. So we okay. give them a gist in the, you know, the first stage where working on reconnecting your pelvic floor with your yeah. diaphragm and making sure all the muscles are loose and scar tissues taken care of. And the mm-hmm. second phase we do this. And then the third phase, that's where you're like jumping rope again and yeah. lifting weights again. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a, that's definitely a, the method itself I think is helpful because it gives people like a path mm-hmm. without like getting like stuck in the weeds. Yeah. But I certainly don't know at all. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other questions for me? I think that's it. Okay. I think that's all I got. Okay. Gotcha. All right. The most important question. Oh, oh no. 
<laughs> okay. So imagine that you've just won, let's just say a Grammy, because I think we're on this whole music theme, right? <laughs> imagine that you're, I don't know, a songwriter from Macklemore, and you've just won a Grammy. Mm -hmm. What would you say in your thank you speech? Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's so hard. I think, um, you know, we don't get here without a lot of different people helping us along the mm -hmm. way and pouring into us. And so just really grateful for everyone who's poured into me and has kind of made me who I am and um, made this album <laughs> what it is. <laughs> Um, yeah, because without, without people, then, you know, it's really hard to grow. So yeah. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> I don't know. That's what you're looking for, but. <laughs> and there's like a clap from the audience. <laughs> that was good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you never know. Um, <laughs> who's watching this? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or what you could be invited to. You just never know. You never know. Wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. That song, Macklemore song just popped up in my head when you said that. Well, perfect. Um, this has been fun getting to know you. Hopefully yeah. you got to know us a little bit more and what it is that we do. Yeah. Um, I'm excited for people to hear this cause you did provide a lot of, inf like I said, a lot of valuable information, regardless of if you're a doctor or not. Um, these are just like business tips that you can, um, you know, utilize in your business. So I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate you for being on here with us. Um, this is, you know, Another episode of the Canyon Studios podcast with uh, Lauren Carver um, here in North Georgia. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, and review us um, on whichever podcasting platform that you listen to. Until next time, this is Gianni with the Canyon Studios podcast.